Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Emporia 48 amp smart home EV charging station. Now this unit actually fits into Emporia's whole ecosystem of smart home energy devices. We're gonna be really looking at the EV charging end of it and talking a little bit about how it integrates with the other units and what it's capable of doing. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. So before we start, let's go over some of the Emporia's key features. The dimensions are 12 and a half inches by nine inches by 3.4 inches. It comes out of the box as a 40 amp plug-in unit. It has a NEMA 1450 plug attached to it. That can deliver 9.6 kilowatt. However, the unit is capable of delivering 48 amps, which is 11 and a half kilowatt, but it has to be hardwired to do that. Your electrician has to remove the plug and directly hardwire it. It comes with a 24 foot long cable, a good long cable. It has a J1772 connector, which is the standard here in North America. So it can charge any electric vehicle, including Tesla vehicles, with the adapter that Tesla provides for its customers. It has a NEMA 4 enclosure. That's very good. That means it's rated against even blowing rain and snow. The enclosure will keep moisture out. It has an operating temperature of between 122 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 50 Celsius to negative 30 Celsius. It's a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. It is UL listed. It's also Energy Star rated and comes with a three year warranty. All right, now let's open the box and see what comes inside. All right, so we have the body of the unit, the J1772 connector that has a rubberized cap, the NEMA 1450 plug, eight screws with drywall anchors, an Allen wrench, and the connector holster. Now the bracket that mounts the unit to the wall is already attached to the back of the unit. There's four screws, two on the top and two underneath. I've removed three of them already. Let's remove the last one here. You need a regular Phillips head screwdriver to do so. That's not included, obviously. And here's the wall mounting plate. Now the interesting thing about this is you simply mount it on the wall here. You've got four holes to mount it. You mark them off and Emporia includes eight screws and eight drywall anchors, as I showed you, but there's only four holes to mount the mounting plate for the unit. That's because the connector holster can either be attached to the unit, you basically slide it into these grooves here and it locks in, and then this screw here that you screw into the wall is going to really secure this unit here. So you screw that in there, you've got the three more holes here, now it's attached. But Maybe you don't wanna have the connector holster right at the unit itself. You can actually put this anywhere in the garage. Maybe you wanna have it hanging right next to the charge port of your car on the other side of the garage. You can do that. You can mount the unit on the wall and then take this with the other th four screws and anchors that Emporia includes and mount this anywhere you want in the garage. So that way you can literally have it right where your charge port is. You just take it off the wall, plug the car in. Next up, let's take a look at the cable deep freeze test to see just how well the Emporia's cable performs in very cold weather climates. Now in this freezer here, I put the Emporia 24 hours ago. This is a commercial ice cream chest, so it's even colder than a regular freezer. As you could see here, we are pulling negative seven degrees. Oh, just dropped down to negative 6.5 degrees. And I actually opened this door a little while ago. It was negative 10 a minute ago. So let's pull this unit out now. Let's see how well the cable performs. Okay. Get this guy hung up. All right, now, I can hear the cable cracking as we expand it. We roll it up in these tight loops and then we see how well it will roll back up in larger loops. Okay, 
It's actually not that bad for such a big thick cable. It's not great. Uh, and I have a feeling the fact that the because the cable's so big is what's partially making it fight me a little bit. But you see, this isn't terrible. For, for a big thick cable like this, uh, it's actually doing better than I thought. I thought this was gonna have very poor results, but you see how uh, the cable will bend and comply with these large loops? It's not just frozen stiff. It's stiff, but it's letting me bend it pretty easily, and uh, it's pretty bendable. Actually, it's, it's, it's done pretty good. This isn't excellent, but it's pretty good, and uh, you know I would recommend this unit for cold weather climates and outdoor installations. Okay, now that we have the unit installed on the wall, let's take a look at it. I elected to use the plug-in version of it and not directly hardwired, and I do that for all the reviews here. But as you'll notice here, it has a really long dongle here with the 1450 plug on it. It's almost two feet long. That's longer than most chargers that we review here do, and that gives you the flexibility of maybe not having to install the unit right on top of the plug. It could be to the left, to the right, above it, below it. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility there. Now, one of the things I noticed immediately here is it has this connector holster that comes off of the body of the unit. And as I mentioned earlier, you could have this mounted remotely somewhere. But after just using it for a very short period of time, I don't like it, and <laughs> let me explain why. So the, first of all, it sits on here. I don't typically like when connectors face upward because that exposes them to rain or uh, even dust if you're working, if it's mounted inside like it has here and you're cutting wood or there's sawdust dust in the air, so the, the particles will land in the connector if you don't use this rubber cap. Now it does have a rubber cap. So, you know, it, it does provide some protection, but every time you plug the car in, you've got to close this. It's kind of a hassle as far as I'm concerned. I much prefer connector holsters where the unit plugs into so that you're not going to get moisture or dust or anything collecting that. And there's another thing that I don't like about this connector holster. Now watch when it's connected here. I want to grab the connector and walk over to my EV and plug it in, right? So I grab it here and look, you, you can't get it off. It, it, it won't come out. You've got to grab it like by up here and then move it in your hand and plug the car in. Or I guess you could do this and that. It's just, I want to grab the connector by the handle. And when you do that, you can't get it off. It's, 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 it's stuck on there. So this is a poor connector holster design as far as I'm concerned, uh, below average. I don't like this connector holster. I, I don't like anything about it. The fact that the, the connector is pointing up so that dust and moisture can go into it if this is mounted outside. Uh, the fact that you can't grab the handle and, and remove. Now it is metal, it's good and strong. If this was plastic, this would definitely break. But it is a strong holster. I just, the ergonomics of it is terrible in my opinion. Now, since we're talking about connector, we're gonna jump into the connector drop test. This is something that we added not too long ago in our reviews. It seems to be something that people appreciate. Uh, if you have an uh, electric vehicle charging equipment with the connector, you're gonna drop this thing every now and then. It's just gonna happen. So I started taking it and dropping it about uh, chest high five times. This is a hard concrete full floor to see if it does any damage to the, to the connector. So we're gonna do that now. All right, that was five. So, uh, well, there's some scuff marks on it for sure, but it's in great shape. This is a, a well-made, strong connector. It's not rubberized. There's no rubberized grip, which uh, I like. So um, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not gonna kill this. It's not a bad connector. It seems like it's well-made. I just wish that the handle here was a little rubberized. I like to grab a little bit of a rubberized handle. It does have grooves for your fingers. So it's, it's pretty good. It's not, it's not terrible, but um, you know, they, they, they can improve on the connector a little bit, but this isn't a bad connector, but that's a bad connector holster. Definitely not gonna get any points for the connector holster here, but it did pass the connector drop test.
The Emporia has a long 24 foot cable, one of the longest cables you'll find on electric vehicle charging equipment. So it's gonna get some points in our charger radio for that. It is, however, very thick. I measured this cable to be 20.3 millimeter. Now I compare that to the charge point home flex that also can deliver 48 amps. And that cable is only 17 millimeter. And the thickness and the weight of the cable does affect its everyday usability when you're plugging in and unplugging your vehicle every day. You know, you want something that's easy to maneuver even if you don't live in a cold weather area. And the Emporia's cable is a little bit thicker and heavier than I'd prefer. Out of the box, the Emporia comes with a NEMA 1450 plug. And if you use it as a plug-in unit, it can deliver up to 40 amps to your electric vehicle, which is 9.6 kilowatt. But if you want it to charge faster, you can hardwire it. And in doing so, now it can deliver 48 amps. But you do need to have an electrician open up the back of the unit. You do that by removing eight Allen screws, and they're gonna to have to remove the plug and hard, directly hardwire it. Now, I urge you not to do this yourself. Get a qualified licensed electrician. I've seen so many instances where people have done these things themselves and then ended up with, at the very least, a burned out unit or a burned outlet that they didn't tighten the connections. Electricians know all the proper codes. They know, they know what wire to use. They use commercial grade outlets, not something that you just buy at a local hardware store that can just burn up from continuous use. And you know, we've partnered with Cumerit here on State of Charge. Cumerit is the largest installer of electric vehicle charging equipment in North America. And I partnered with them because I've had so many people ask me, Tom, okay, you've helped me select the right charge equipment. Now who installs it? And I got so much positive feedback about the Cumerit network that we came to an agreement for them to sponsor this channel and they are my recommended installer. You can follow the link in the description of this video to the Cumerit website for a free, no hassle, no obligation estimate to install your electric vehicle charging equipment. Whether it's the Emporia or a different unit, it doesn't matter. They can install anything. Now I mentioned out of the box, it comes as a plug-in unit that can deliver 40 amps. But if you do have an electrician directly hardwire it, you need to go into the Emporia app and change the setting so it'll deliver 48 amps because the default setting is 40 amps. You can actually adjust the power all the way down to a 12 amp if you don't have that extra capacity in your house, you don't have a circuit that can provide you with full 40 amps, there's no internal dip switch inside the unit, which some electric vehicle charging equipment has. This is all done through the app, but I urge you, make sure you do not make a mistake and check off 48 amps if you're charging from a NEMA 1450 outlet because you're gonna overload the circuit if you do that. And speaking of the app, the Emporia is a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. So let's take a look at how you connect it to the app. The first thing you need to do is download the Emporia app. Then you need to pair it with your charger. Emporia uses this app for a number of other home energy devices, so you need to select the EV charger option. It then asks you if you need help installing the unit. We've already done that, so I selected go directly to setup. From there, you need to grant the app access and give it a couple of seconds to find your charger's Bluetooth signal. Once it appears, simply click on it and it will begin to connect to the device. It will then ask you for permission to know your location and you can choose whether or not to give them your precise location or just a general location. You'll then see your Wi-Fi network listed and you have to enter your password. The app will then connect you to the Emporia Cloud. You can then name the charger if you'd like and enter the type of EV that you drive. You can see at the bottom, it defaults to a 50 amp circuit for 40 amp continuous power delivery. That's where you would need to change the power output if you wanted the unit to deliver less power or if you hardwired it and want it to deliver the full 48 amps. The app also reminds you that the circuit that the charger is on needs to be rated at 125% of the maximum power you'll be charging at. That's why a 50 amp NEMA 1450 outlet is only allowed to deliver 40 amps to the vehicle. If you have an electrician hardwire the unit, then it needs to be on a 60 amp circuit to deliver 48 continuous amps. When you're all done, the app will check for any firmware updates and you're ready to charge your EV. 
The app also allows users to set charging schedule and take advantage of lower off-peak electricity rates. You can also view your past charging sessions, including your monthly energy use and also your monthly peak demand usage. And if you have a solar array and you get the Emporia View Smart Home Energy Monitoring System, you can use it to only charge your electric vehicle with excess solar generation. The charger will pair with the View system and it will only charge the car when you have excess generation. That's a pretty cool feature. In fact, Emporia has a whole host of energy saving and monitoring devices that you can use in tandem with your EV charger. And finally, let's talk price. Now, when the Emporia hit the market earlier this year, it was priced at a very low $399. And because it was such a good price, a lot of my followers reached out to me and said, hey, Tom, have you seen this new unit yet? It's only $400, please review it. So I reached out to Emporia and I was gonna review it. However, it wasn't UL listed at the time. Emporia was going through the UL certification process. So we decided to wait until the unit was UL listed before I reviewed it. It is now UL listed. I actually got this unit a few months ago, but I recently renovated the state of charge garage. I had no power here. We had to pull all the circuits out. I had a Q Merit come back in, rewire everything once I was done with the garage makeover. So now we're started back up with our reviews and the Emporia is actually my first review now. I've got a bunch more coming, so stay tuned. However, that $399 original price no longer stands. It's now $499, 25% more. And it wasn't really because of popularity and Emporia just decided to raise the price. It really was because of supply chain issues and current inflation. And I've talked to Emporia about this at great length. And I'm seeing this across the industry. A lot of the charging equipment that I reviewed recently is now 50, 75, $100 more. It's just a fact of life today. The, in, with inflation and supply chain problems, the parts cost so much more for them to put these things together. So they have to pass it along somewhere. However, I did talk to Emporia and they said, if things do settle back down, they may be able to cut the price back a little bit some point in the future. But in any event, even at $4.99, I think it's a very good deal. Uh, you know, take a look at what's out there for $500. That's a 48 amp Wi-Fi enabled smart charger that's UL certified, comes with an app and uh, Energy Star rated, long cable. You know, I think it's a pretty good value where it is right now. But now let's take a look at exactly how it's scored. And to do that, first we're gonna go to our charger rater. All right, well, first take a look at the cost and value category. At only $500, the Emporia is a good deal. We get 18 points in that category. Next, power and weatherproof rating. The Emporia finishes up with 22 points. Very good score for that category. Next up is construction and durability. We only ended up with 17 points in that category. I think the connector holster being poor hurt it there. Smart, non-smart category ends up with 18 points, good scoring, and safety certified and warranty. It has a three-year warranty, so it ends up with 18 points, giving the Emporia a grand total of 93 points, an excellent score, and that works out to 4.65 stars out of five. I also like to offer my own personal opinion and give it a score because not everything can be quantified by points. My personal score for the Emporia is 4.55 stars, making the average between the Charger Rater score and my score 4.6, an excellent score, one of the highest ratings we've ever given here on State of Charge. This is a very good unit, and with some minor tweaks, it can be an outstanding unit. So let's take a quick look at some of the hits and misses. Some of my hits are, it's a powerful 48 amp unit, it's a very good price, and it has excellent add-on features through the Emporia ecosystem. You can set this thing up to have a lot more functionality if you buy additional Emporia products. Some of the misses are it has a terrible connector holster. It has a thick, heavy cable, and it's not Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant compatible like some of the latest Wi-Fi connected smart chargers are. All right, well, that's a wrap on our Emporia Home EV Smart Charger. Very good score, very good unit at a good price. 
and it's one of our recommended units here on State of Charge. If this is your first time here, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle charging equipment reviews and EV news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.